This is Justin. And this is Haley. You're listening to The Price of Avocado Toast. We're a married millennial couple wanting to normalize the conversations around money. We want to hear about your highs and your lows. The do's and the don'ts on your path towards financial freedom. Hi, Toasties. Welcome to The Price of Avocado Toast, episode 17. Whether you're a first-time listener or you've been following us from the start of this thing, we are so glad to have this conversation with you today. And by have this conversation with you, I mean have this conversation with Ryan, our financial coach. You guys, we finally got to sit down with the famous Ryan at Me Financially Free on Instagram. We shout him out so much. We are so stoked that we finally got to chat with him and just find out a little bit more about what he does and who he is. And we now get to introduce our wonderful listeners to Ryan. I agree. It was great sitting down and chatting with him. And without any further wait, here is our interview with Ryan. All right, you guys, we are sitting down today finally with our financial coach, Ryan. He is at me financially free on Instagram. Ryan, dude, thank you so much for sitting down with us. We're so glad that you are back from vacation so we can chat with you. Absolutely. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you guys have me on. Yeah, I feel like we're like unveiling this like warlock to the world. <laughs> the Ryan. Yeah, the <laughs> Ryan at Me Financially Free. Everybody everybody hears me say that and now they're getting a, a taste of the magic for sure. That's good. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. We, we connected over Instagram. So I just love that. That's how we met. And that's how we are connecting with so many of our like the people that follow us and the people that listen to the podcast. So just thanks for reaching out to me that one day because we wouldn't have met you had you not done that. Yeah, as I, I was actually kind of testing out some things at that point. I was like, wonder if I reach out to some different people, if I could, you know, get some interaction with some different people and it, and it seemed to work. So I'm glad I did too. Yeah, it's definitely worked for us. So we're happy. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So everyone has so many questions for us about who you are. Uh, several people on our little poll thing. We have a Google poll in our, um, like a link in our bio on Instagram. Several people have said, interview your financial coach, talk to Ryan, <laughs> go ask your financial coach all these questions. So super happy that you are here so we can kind of figure out who this mysterious Ryan is. Yeah, maybe I'm keeping a little too much mystery. Let's let's figure out who I am. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like I said a couple of weeks ago, we won't uh, we won't hound you with too many of people's personal uh, <laughs> budgeting questions or financial questions. You end up having like a, a talk show here where you got to sort through everybody's problems in 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm no Dave Ramsey, that's for sure. I mean, I'll, I'll do the best I can, but I've Perfect. learned from, I've learned from the best at the very least. So Perfect. So can you just start off and tell us and our listeners a little bit about who you are and your story and how you got to be a financial coach? Yeah. So it really goes back probably six years now. And, you know, I was a heavy civil construction superintendent at the time and um, I was making really good money. I was in the six figures and I was making great money, um, was married, um, was kind of going through that whole process of, of figuring marriage out. I was newly wed essentially. And I looked down one day and I'm like, man, how are we living paycheck to paycheck every single week here? I'm making really good money. She's making really good money. At one point, you know, between the two of us, we were almost over 200 grand a year. And I just couldn't figure it out. And so I sat down and I started following some of this Dave Ramsey stuff. And I picked up a book and I read it in like a week, like plowed right through it. I was like hooked. And then it was the fact of trying to get my spouse hooked at that time, right? Which was really difficult because looking back on it now, you know, me and her are divorced and, uh, but it, it was just, we weren't on the same page with so many different things and so many things, uh, just not even just financially related, but other things lined up that we just weren't agreed, agreeing upon. So, um, we kind of just took a step back and, uh, I realized that, um, you know, we made it a year and a half and, um, I tried all sorts of things. It ended up in divorce, uh, but a lot of it was due to money. Um, the final straw for me was I got a bonus for $20,000 one week. It hit my account. 
boom, which is a lot of money. <laughs> and it was gone in four days. Oh my God. And yeah, you know, from a bank account going from zero dollars or close to zero to 20, you know, 20 something thousand. And then you four days later, it's like before you even hit the weekend, it's gone. <laughs> you know, that was a normal thing, paycheck to paycheck. But then when that kind of money hits, you don't expect that to happen. Right. And uh, yeah, it was just all gone. And I was like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I can't be living this way. And so, uh, yeah, filed and uh, it ultimately led me to where I'm at now. And, um, you know, I, I think I had to go through my journey by myself, which was good because I was able to push really hard. I ended up paying after all the debt and everything settled, the dust settled. I was right around 50,000 in debt and I chunked away that at, in eight months, you know, 50,000 wow. in eight months pushed hard. And uh, by the time I got done with that, I was just exhausted and I was ready to kind of live a different life. And so I, I quit, uh, you know, my construction business stuff that I was doing and, and I started this financial thing and I've really enjoyed it. I get to talk to a lot of cool people like yourselves and um, really help people, which has been awesome and, and see some different futures and some different things that some other people might not see. Um, so yeah, and that's kind of really where I kind of came from and, and got to where I am now. That's awesome. Just if you don't mind me kind of asking, do you see as a financial coach that lifestyle inflation fairly often where people are making such great money, but they are just consistently inflating their lifestyle as they get those raises to where paycheck to paycheck is not a, you know, a low wage earner situation. It's all across the board. Oh, absolutely. I think it's, I think your mind does it in a way that's like, uh, you know, it's, you look at this stuff and you go, I can afford that. And, and without that proper learning or that proper like mindset shift, which is something I talk about all the time, you know, um, without that mindset shift of not, can I afford this, but is this of, of value to me in my life? Um, I, I think you just start chasing more and more and more and bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Um, keeping up with the Joneses kind of a deal, you know, guilty. Yeah. We're definitely guilty. Of that. Yeah. I've sure. been there. I mean, my, my big get my guilty pleasure was, a. Uh, uh, vehicles. I was like, I've been, I'm 32 now and I've probably had 16 cars. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a <laughs> that lot. Was, that was my guilty pleasure. But over the last six years, I've had two, you know? And yeah. so like, that's crazy that in 15 years of driving, you know, you know, I've had almost a new car every single year, but the last six I haven't, you know, that's just yeah. tell you how, from how much I was flipping through cars, you know? Wow. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's pretty crazy. So you yeah. really did know your stuff when we were talking to you about selling our forerunner. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I've, I've done it a lot. I've done it. I've <laughs> sold. I've traded. I've straight across traded titles. Met a dude in a parking lot and like, here's my title. Thanks for your title. Later, you know. And yeah, so I've done a lot of that. So yeah, that's right. Just for the listeners out there, when we were thinking of selling the vehicle and we reached out to Ryan and we had talked about a price, he was like, I think you could get a little bit higher for it. And we ended up, yeah, getting it for about. We sold it for about two grand higher. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Thanks. And we sold it within like two <laughs> days. That was the thing. Yeah. Once we posted it, that thing flew. Right. It was crazy. I, I had no idea that cars sold that fast, like through Facebook and Craigslist. Yeah. It yeah. It's quick. just the type of vehicle you got, right? I mean, you guys had a an awesome vehicle there. You had a, yeah. you know, a Toyota 4Runner, which you can't beat, right? You've, you've got mm -hmm. something good. So, yeah, it was a treat for sure. So this, uh, this next question is, I'm sure, you know, one that you've heard before as a financial coach, and it's one that we got asked on Instagram. Can you give the listeners just a brief explanation of the difference between financial coach and financial advisor? Absolutely. Yeah, I get that one a lot. Um, I think it's a common misconception a little bit. Um, so a financial advisor is someone that's going to take control of your money and tell you exactly what to do with it. Um, they're going to make moves with them, that stuff. Um, and, and they're a lot of the times they kind of give you some sort of outcome that you're expected to get. Um, a coach is, is what I am. And, and that's just kind of one of those things where much like your football coach, right? You're, you're there to guide those kids to do something or create something for themselves. Um, and if they don't push themselves to be greater and better and better, then they're not going to be greater and better and better. Um, 
and and it's just more of a having a person there on your side on your team and you have someone helping you look at all the different angles hey you're weak here hey you're strong here you need to focus on this area because this is where you're weak um, some things like that right it really just opens up options um, and that's just really what I do mostly that's awesome I like that analogy yeah you really are a teacher right yeah yeah I'm just kind of there and it, it clicks a lot to the idea of like you said the mindset shift like you're you're coaching people to have this mindset of I'm going to clean up these things much like a, a play in football or something I'm gonna clean up these little kinks so that things run smoothly you know, versus somebody else who is simply just making a decision and dictating exactly what you're going to do, like a, a machine or something. Do financial advisors like benefit from the investments? Yeah. So they take a percentage of what they make. Um, uh, depends on what you're doing, on what you, how you structure that. Uh, there's a couple different ones. I'm not super familiar with them all just because it's not in my realm at all. Um, but from my understanding of it, you, you can essentially get, um, it's a certain percentage It's somewhere between, you know, half a percent. I've heard somewhere up to 2%, which is ridiculous, I think, um, to manage, have somebody manage your money for you. Um, but depending on the size of your account, you know, that can be a substantial amount of money that you're paying somebody to kind of put where they, where they think it should go. And in some cases it's a great tool to use. Yeah, absolutely. And so financial coaches, people do pay you, but you are just advising them on what to do and tossing up ideas, but not necessarily saying you need to invest your money here, here, and here and do this. But it's just like a recommendation or a bunch of potential ideas and then people can decide for themselves. Yeah. I mean, so, so you think of a, a financial advisor, they're like you just said, they're strictly investments. Like they are only investments. I'm going to look into more than that. I want to look at your lifestyle. I want to look at, do you guys have too much car? Do you guys have too much house? Do you guys have uh, a budget problem? Um, are you guys spending too much here or there? Um, you know, I'm going to look at all aspects. I'm going to look at both of you guys when I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. Is one of you guys kind of standoffish? Is one of you, I'm more of like a, <laughs> the best way to put it is a counselor in a sense, kind of, you know, I'm a yeah. combination yeah. of a, a financial counselor, right? Um, I'm someone that you can seek advice from and I'll give you tools to really kind of help you get your problems fixed. But ultimately, you're going to be the one that has to practice those tools uh, day in and day out in order to achieve whatever it is you're trying to get to. My favorite part about working with you so far, I think we've worked with you since maybe late June or something like that. It sounds about right. Um, but it has just been, you know, Justin and I have our ideas of what we want to do. I think one way is right. He thinks another way is right. And usually we're pretty aligned. But you brought up like a third world that we didn't even know existed. Right. <laughs> like all of these possibilities. And it just made our mind just kind of expand to like, whoa, it doesn't have to just be the Justin and Haley way of doing things. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, you can expand your thought process and really have a bunch of ideas we wouldn't have even considered li like selling our car or looking into selling the timeshare had we not had the experience with you as a financial coach so that's been really cool i find that a lot with my different clients um i've, I've a new ones recently they you know if we first sat down for a consultation call and you know they said you know we, we got a new car we have a new car payment you know I, um but you know we have to we had to do it because our old car broke down, you know, and you hear that, those kind of things we had to because of this, or we had to because of that. Right. And a lot of the times they will just go stop and they'll just like, what? <laughs> and I go, Hey, that isn't part. I want you to change that whole mindset shift. I'm going to start doing that every single time I see you doing something. I'm going to say, stop. And now I'm going to explain to you why you're saying that. And is that really a true fact? And we're going to kind of dissect that a little bit and figure out, if that's true, that's true. But most of the time, it's a subconscious thing that you're thinking in your head, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. And I think it's important, too, because, you know, we're so locked into it. We're right in the thick of things. So it's hard for us. We get those blinders on and we can't see 
the problem from a 30,000 foot view. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in the trenches dealing with it. And sometimes you need a counselor to step back and say, well, have you looked at it like this? Or what if we changed this word or we changed this thought pattern? Does it change the game completely? And it did. I mean, almost immediately it flipped some of our desires and some of our goals and some of the things that we wanted as uh, partners and parents. And it was mm -hmm. simply through somebody else saying, well, I've heard and seen there's another way to do this. What do you think about that? And it doesn't come off as condescending. It doesn't come off as a, hey, that's wrong. It should be like this. It's a, hey, let me present this option. And you just tell me what you think when I first say that. Mm -hmm. And that's what's been nice. Yeah, that's been that's been cool. So I have a question for you that I feel like I keep seeing a bunch of financial coaches touching on this on Instagram. But what do you say specifically to people when they are in financial shambles, but they use the excuse or the reason that I, I just can't afford it? Like, I really need help, but there's no way I could afford a financial coach. Uh, it's a great question because um, I think, you know, majority of the people, no matter what even financial status they're in, um, don't feel like they want to pay for something like that, right? They want to go out, they'll go out and they'll spend money on something else. No problem, right? They'll go spend a lot of money on something else, right? But when it comes to um, paying for coaching sessions, for some reason, there's this this disconnect with some people that it, it just doesn't make sense to spend that kind of money. What am I going to get out of this? And I think it's a lot of time they just don't see the value there yet. Um, mm -hmm. so that's what I try to do is I try to present that value the best I can during that first coaching session. That's why I don't really put a limit on how long that coaching, that first initial consultation is going to take because, you know, I could sit there for an hour or two hours even because sometimes it just takes that long to really dissect what someone's got going on and really get to where we're on the same page together. Um, but I think as far as your question goes, I, you know, I don't really say if someone doesn't want to do it, they don't want to do it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And if I don't want, if I don't want a client that's going to not be in it to win it. And I, I don't want to, I don't want to have to deal and try to constantly push somebody that's going to kind of blow me off when I try to push them to do a couple more things or try to, I want somebody that's like, um, you know, that's going to be inspiring to me, you know, that's going to really want to push me to, to do even better for them or try to find something better for them, you know? And so I think that's where, I just don't, I just, I don't try to catch that, that person. There's nothing I'm going to say that's going to, if they're not ready, they're not ready. You know, I might touch base with them again later, but um, yeah, ultimately if they're not ready to do it, they're not. I love that you said that because you cannot force people to start their journey to becoming debt free. And, you know, when you are ready and you're in the mindset to change, you can do anything. Absolutely. You can literally move mountains. Mm -hmm. You will find a way to come up with the money selling things in your house or whatever. But yeah, if you don't have the right mindset, I mean, it's really a waste of everyone's time, but I love that. Yeah. And it goes back to your ebook that you put <clears throat> out, Ryan, of finding your why. Mm -hmm. right. And, you know, that that's such an important part of the process. You cannot just jump into trying to clean up your finances and become more you know, sustainable down the road without having a clear why and a clear goal. And it seems like that, that again, like you talk about the mindset shift. I think it's, that's particularly where you are strong is that you're really dedicated to helping people find their why so that when they get into it, you know, when they step in the ring with the gloves on, like they don't get to dance around. Like you got to get in there and throw some punches. And mm -hmm. um, if you have your why in mind, it makes it a lot easier. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, you, if you don't have, if you don't have that stuff and you don't have something to drive for, you're not going to get there. You're not going to drive. I've had plenty of clients that have, you know, done four sessions with and, and they still haven't figured it out. And, and then it just fizzles out, you know, and then I just stop, stop trying to push with them and they don't even contact me. You know what I mean? And it just turns into nothing, which is fine. <clears throat> they're just not ready yet, but one day they're going to come back and they're going to be, Hey, I remember how that went and I think I'm ready now, you know, let's yeah. do this. Yeah. And that's important. You know, you kind of just, I think as teachers, we do that sometimes, you know, if a kid's having a hard day, you, you, you say, okay, 
you know, that that's our day today. And the next day when that kid shows up, you extend your hand and hope they're willing to come along the, the ride for learning. And if they're not, then, okay, I can't keep um, trying to drag you along here. At some point, you've got to invest in your learning and take my hand so I can help you. <laughs> I yeah. literally did that today with my class. They yeah. were not receptive <laughs> to what I was doing at all. They were all just kind of staring at me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we're just going to stop here and do something fun because this is a waste of everyone's time if you guys are just staring at me. Yeah. <laughs> got to come back to it later. <laughs> I hope it. I hope it's not like that for you. I hope you don't get just a bunch of adults staring at you <laughs> like, fix my life. <laughs> I've had some empty stares for sure. Like, you, you want me to do what? <laughs> <laughs> I bet. What? Okay, so this one, this is a trip. This wasn't a question that, you know, somebody gave us, but this was something that Haley and I heard the other day, and I was like, oh, man, I got to ask Ryan what he would think about this. So, um, some friends, you know, Haley and I, I should, I should start, but Haley and I used to just, gosh, we would just talk constantly about cleaning up our finances. And then it was eventually like, okay, shut up, let your actions do the talking and, you know, and people will respond as they need. But somebody the other day said, cause they were saying like, oh, you guys are doing great. We're proud of you for the podcast and what you're doing. They said, but we don't make enough money in our house to even set a budget. And we were both kind of like, we were driving home later, like, what? Like that doesn't, you know, obviously we didn't continue the conversation and say, well, actually like a budget would help me with that. But <laughs> I, I, yeah, I didn't even know what to say. It was just like the strangest thing I had heard. Have you ever heard where somebody claims like a budget is only for a certain income oh, yeah. limit? All the time. Yeah, Budgeting for sure. Is for it's rich a, people. <laughs> yeah. It's a big thing, right? I don't make enough money to budget. And I was like, well, that's the exact reason you need to budget. And <laughs> it's a, it's a hard thing to get pushed through to somebody when they have that, that uh, mental roadblock already right there. Right. You got to, come into the into the whole thing with a little bit of an open mind and you got to be willing to change a few things because obviously they need changing <laughs> but um yeah i mean uh, you know i ended up talking to a gal on instagram and she's doing budgets for people you know on, on the uh you know through their their uh facebook group that's what it was and she'd put a thing out there saying hey i'll do a budget for you and she reached out to me and she's like hey you know i noticed you're you're posting here a lot and answering a lot of questions are you a financial coach? You know, we talked a little bit and she, she said, I would love to do budgets for you. And I was like, I might consider that because there's so many people that I come across, you know, that have a hard time jumping into this idea of creating a budget for themselves. Um, it's just one of those things that you don't want to do. <laughs> it's, all, it's like homework, right? Yeah. Nobody wants to do it. Um, but once you do, it becomes easier and easier and easier. It's definitely hard in the beginning, just like everything, but it comes so much easier. And, and I think you look at those things, um, those people that don't want to do it because uh, and they're, they're making that excuse, right? Like I said earlier with the car, because my car broke down. Well, I don't make enough money. That's why I can't do a budget. And, I, you know, it's, like, it's an excuse that they've made up in their head. Um, and unless you can get past that, then you can't really um, move forward with it, right? Yeah. I agree. The budgets do, they take some time though. And they're, mm -hmm. they're difficult. I mean, we, we constantly still are trying to clean things up and you uh -huh. know, you've definitely been like, Hey, miscellaneous is a little high there guys. Like let's <laughs> flesh that out a little bit more. So we're not just like arbitrarily putting in numbers and you know, yeah, it, it does take time. There's other parts that I'm like, Oh yes. Like we've cleaned this up so well to like the penny. We know like our insurance is like right here every time that's perfect. And like, our budgeting for calliope where you don't usually go over because we're starting to hit like that sweet spot and there's other times where i'm like man this is really hard it's it's difficult to get the budget to the exact number that you want it to be right but it's a it's a continual thing that i think you do and you, you constantly work on it and you get better at it the first few times suck they suck they're like there's no about there's no roundabout way to do it it's just not fun but once yeah. you kind of start looking at the numbers and you, you can play with it and you can make a game out of it and have some fun, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to suck. We should, we should find some cool budget game. I mean, cause I look forward to our budget meetings now because we're finally at the point where it's like, wow, we're paying off some good money. There's, yeah. there's, there's more money at the end of the month, not more month at the end of the money. <laughs> <laughs> like this is good, but we should, I don't know. Maybe we'll come up with a cool game. I don't know. You've seen a lot of those no spend things, right? You see all sorts of stuff like I'm gonna make this zero this month. I'm not gonna do anything with this, or like you just pick, they just pick one thing. I've seen all sorts of random stuff. So. Oh my God! What if we did? I don't know if I can do this. 
maybe like in January after we Christmas shop, but like a no Amazon month. You said, Ooh. what if we could? I'm like, I've Ooh. been on no Amazon month. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all down for that. Yeah, let's get the holiday spending out of the way because, you know, and I know this may be a sidebar, but we've got money in our Christmas budget this year because we actually saved up because right. Christmas surprisingly is in December again this year. Weird. <laughs> so we planned for it. <laughs> yeah. So we can spend, you're right. We can spend for Christmas and then January. There it is. Hold us to it. Listeners. Yeah. It's a, there's, there's like a whole new year's resolution thing right there. Yes. Oh my gosh. It's going down. I love it. So the, the new year's resolution goals, lose 20 pounds and no Amazon January. <laughs> <laughs> lose 20 pounds. That's funny. That never happens. That's everybody's New Year's goal. So. <laughs> no. no. Okay, so Ryan, we have one a question for you about investing. Awesome. And a lot of people actually have questions about us doing um, episodes on investing and retirement and stuff. And right. we need to learn a little bit more about that before we do full-blown episodes. But I had someone on Instagram reach out wanting me to ask you this. Uh, she is 28 and she was wondering if she invested the max into her Roth IRA every year, which is 6000 is that going to be enough for her to retire when she's at retirement age? Yeah, so you look at something like that um, from you're 28, right? You're super young. That's a good time. To, I mean, now's the time, always. No matter what age you are, now's the time to start investing, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you're working these steps, stop it, right? And then work through the steps, pound out your debt. Once the debt's done, boom, go, 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 go on investing. Um, is 6K enough? Um, it just depends on what you want to retire with, really. Um, that 6k at 7% is 1.1 ish million a year. If you make 10% on that over the average time, that's 2.1, right? That's a pretty drastic change on 3%, right? Um, but that's a million dollar difference just on 3%. So the, the real focus should be on what you're investing in. If you're going to stick to that low of a percentage or that low of a dollar amount um, over the course of your life, you know, it's what are you investing in to get that 10% return? Because at 2 million, you should be able to retire pretty comfortably. Had you mm -hmm. live, had you live frugally and still enjoyed yourself a little bit, you should be totally fine. Um, I use bankrate.com for this stuff. Um, they've got an awesome investment tool. Go on there, play with it, go up and down. You can change all sorts of different things. Um, you can put in all sorts of different scenarios, different calculations, and it tells you all sorts of really cool stuff. So that's what I use. It tells you, pre and post retirement because in post retirement i mean death um so like it'll tell you how much you, you'd have in there at, at death even after a four percent draw and all this like stuff it's got a, it's got some really cool calculation stuff which i'm a total nerd on and i love love playing with that stuff so um but investment stuff is is something i can't really this is where the which is where the financial Adv advisor comes into play right so i can't ever mm -hmm. say for sure yeah this is what's going to happen but do some research look into it uh i've been doing this stuff since i was 14 like my dad forced me into it and i'm so glad he did uh yeah. you know it's been it's been good for me because you know now i've got a, a huge chunk i'm 32 and i've got a huge chunk i don't have to if i didn't want to i don't have to invest anymore for the rest of my life if i didn't want to of course that's not gonna happen because i want to want to rack that thing up you know let's see what i can get to but uh that's the key i think is to really just start investing early. yeah the glory of compound interest it's yeah. amazing it's amazing one of the it's things amazing. that i like that you do i think really well again ryan is um anytime that Haley and i have brought up something that probably was not <laughs> necessary in our lives and for example i'm going to use the uh the timeshare and so our monthly payment, Haley and I, you guys, listeners know we are totally transparent. Our monthly payment on the timeshare is $224 and that's for seven years. And the maintenance fee each year is $500. And so we said, well, you know, in the, in the famous lines of Justin and Haley, we can make it work. And <laughs> we were talking to Ryan about it. And he said, well, let's look at even once you pay it off, let's just look at the $500. If you chose to invest that, instead of paying that maintenance fee, what does that look like 20 years down the road from now? 
And five hundred dollars a year is not a ton of money invested. I mean, we you just talked about the six thousand, you know, being the minimum. I mean, the the maximum you could put in, but you know, you had uh, you would potentially have other investment options. Um, but even five hundred dollars over the course of time because of compound interest is ridiculous. I mean, it, it would have been up to I think it was like thirty or forty thousand. Yeah. And at that point, it's you know, one of our kids is going to college. Yeah. Because we made the right choice and sacrificed long term for a vacation in Cancun. I want, so, to when, I want to say when we ran that out, it was almost it was like seventy or eighty grand. Yeah, I was gonna say I feel like it was, it was even higher. It was almost a hundred grand, I think. Uh, yeah, when we ran that out, which uh, is crazy. Yeah, and again, I mean, it's just you can get on bank rate and play with those numbers, and you know, if you're a listener and you're thinking of investing, reach out to a financial advisor because they'll they'll help you out with that. But it's always nice just having a coach again saying, you know, look at it a different way. Um, and if you guys are listening to this, we'll toss bank rate. We'll put that in the, in the show notes. So you guys are able to just kind of go down there and click the link and go straight to it. Cause that's such a cool tool and it's definitely helped. Um, so I want to ask Ryan, you've kind of mentioned, you know, your, your dad got you started on stuff and we found you as a financial coach. What would you say is like your training through all this? Do financial coaches have training or like, where do what do people say because it's not like a college background for specifically this but like where does it come from uh so it's essentially just a certificate um any joe schmo can go get this stuff anybody can go get one uh it's a matter of you know for me there's there's several different avenues you can go to uh some of them are better than others um some of them have more value than others i think for sure i did the, the ramsey program is that the best one i don't know because i never did the other ones but i've heard a lot of really great things about the other accredited programs yeah i think that it's it's not a college degree per se but you have still gone through the learning and you're still you know helping people as a service and that learning is important and you know, sometimes people just don't want to do the learning themselves and they need somebody who's done the learning to be like, Hey, I've put forth the time. I've done this stuff. I've paid attention to what I need to let me be your Sherpa on the mountain up, you know, financial literacy. So, right. Yeah. It's a, it's, there's a lot of really good stuff in there too, that I didn't even know when I went into it. I mean, I was, I felt pretty well versed, like I knew what I was doing and that's kind of why I wanted to do that. Um, but even after I jumped in, there's a lot of stuff in there that's really you don't think about and you really that really gets your mind uh, cranking on some different ideas and I think that's really what helps you get to that coaching point where you can you're it, it teaches you how to be a coach really more than it does about the general facts of finances I also want to mention that one of the things I really appreciate about you is that you have gone through your own journey mm -hmm. And it definitely hasn't been as bad as ours, but it's not like one person's debt's better than another, you know. Mm -hmm. I just appreciate that you know what it feels like to be in our shoes. And so I would recommend that anyone who's listening who's interested in a financial coach, well, first off, you should have Ryan. But secondly, <laughs> um, <laughs> find someone who has been through it, not someone who's just done things the right way the whole time. Because I feel like, um, it's really helpful having someone who understands what you're going through firsthand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like Justin said, when we first had our first like consultation, I knew as soon as I saw the backwards hat, trucker hat, <laughs> that's my dude, you know, like, so it's like, you just got to find that person that fits for you. You know, I might not fit with a, someone that's much older, but, but because I'm around your guys' age or younger and I might, you know, connect better with you guys or whatever it is. So find that coach that fits for you. Even if it's not me, find that person that, that actually is going to encourage you to get to where you want to be. Yeah. And I will say that price of avocado toast was born out of an idea of helping millennials with their finances and understanding their financial path. And Ryan is directly in the middle of the age of millennials. So I, you can swing both ways. That's a wide gap. So if you're a millennial yes. listener, I, I'm steering you towards Ryan, <laughs> pushing you down the Ryan River for sure. Because the he Ryan is, River. He is right on your mark. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, okay, so this is our last question, and it's a, a question we ask all of our guests. And I'm excited to ask you because 
for most of them, I can kind of guess what people are going to say. And I know you the best of the people that we've interviewed, and I don't know what you're going to say. Um, <laughs> so if you could put a stop sign on someone's financial journey, what would you stop them from doing? What's the first thing you'd stop them from doing? Um, it about for me, it's changing your mind and, and, and realizing just put that stop sign up and whatever it is you're doing, just stop and think about it. And what are all of your options? So stopping and looking at every single option that you have out there, because like I said before, the car broke down. Now we need a new car whatever happened now we need to do this you know the roof's leaking we need to redo the kitchen or you know just stuff that you're making stop making excuses is what it really comes down to Ugh. stop making excuses own up to your actions and and go crush some debt yes yeah that, that's what's up that's quotable oh yeah and i did not think he would say that i mean i think? it makes sense now because it's like <laughs> yeah no duh like He's very clear on like the mindset shift of What'd like, think? I, I, my in, initial thought was going to be stop taking out debt. <laughs> well, I, I mean, that thing, 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 that's just, if you're following this journey, that's just the most obvious thing out of it all. Right. And, and yeah, true. that's true for sure. But I think the root cause of all of it is your mindset. And yeah, once mm -hmm. you have that mindset shift, no matter what that could go for anything in life with, with your marriage or that can go with whatever. And, and it will change. If you can change it with your money, you can change it with so many different other aspects of your life and like literally change your whole life. Yeah. And so if you can, if you're focused on this money thing right now and you can change it and fix it with this money, you can apply that same logic and that same principle to every other aspect of your life and crush your entire life. It's kind of like Ramsey says, like the symptom is going into debt, right? But the problem is you're making excuses for part of your life Absolutely. and you're using debt to cover that up. Or, you know, the symptom is you're overweight and the problem is you're making excuses for your time and not being able to work out or whatever it may be, right? We see those symptoms when the problem is not that you're in debt. The problem is that you're making excuses as to why that's justifiable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, that is quotable. I love that. That's gold. awesome. Good that's job, gold. Ryan. Well, yeah. thanks. I tried. I thought about <laughs> this one beforehand because I knew you were going to ask the question. <laughs> nice. like, oh, I'm going to be ready for this. <laughs> nice. I know future, what's coming. <laughs> future guests are, uh, are, are locked in now. They're like, all right, I've heard this question multiple times. I know. <laughs> Let's get prepared. Yeah. Okay, so Ryan, how can our listeners get a hold of you? How can they contact you? How can they go down the Ryan river. Uh, easiest way is probably Instagram. Um, you can go on Instagram, find my page. I do not post on there a whole lot. I used to in the very beginning. Um, my goal was to try to get a bunch of followers. Uh, now it's just about focusing on other things in my life. Um, found myself, I use a lot of, t I spent a lot of time doing stuff, trying to figure stuff out there. So, but you can get all my information there as far as my email, uh, send you directly to my website. Uh, it's got my phone number, I think directly on there. Call me, text me, something. It doesn't matter. It's open and available. So, um, yeah, that's the easiest way to get a hold of me is Instagram. It's got all my info there and that's, Perfect. uh, me financially free on Instagram. I bet. <laughs> I bet you people won't forget that one, but we'll put that in the show notes just in case you forgot, but we mention it every episode, probably three times, Ryan at me yeah. financially free <laughs> <laughs> on Instagram, <laughs> but that's where he's at. Okay. So Ryan, thank you so much for coordinating with us so we can do a coaching session giveaway. Yes. I'm super excited about this. So all of you listeners, we are about to approach 5,000 downloads. And once we hit 5,000 downloads, we're going to be doing a giveaway. And Ryan is going to be giving away two free coaching sessions. Basically a, what did you call it? A consultation and a follow-up? Yeah, I think, you know, we'll sit down the first one and let's figure out where you're at. Let's meet on the same page and get in the middle. And then I'll probably give a little bit of homework. We'll decide where we're going to go from there. And then as far as the second session goes, we'll just dive into whatever it is you feel like you need to work on. So it really is going to depend person to person. Yeah, that's and awesome. Extremely beneficial, no matter who you are, as long as you're in the right mindset, can be literally life-changing. After, after our first session with you i was like 
let's go make some moves. And yeah. then <laughs> by the second one, I I think we sold our car. I mean, we were we were going for it. Yeah, it was pretty classic. I because I, I remember I called you and you said, I said, when's your payoff date? When is your guys's? When are you gonna be done? You said mm-hmm. 2024, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was like, no, no way. <laughs> Absolutely <Yeah>. not. <laughs> no way. You can do better than that. God, that's so dope. Just, it's just thinking about right that, yeah. You guys, um, Ryan in our first, it was either our first or second meeting with Ryan, he goes, okay, well, now that we've got all this debt sorted out and we know where we're at, what's your payoff date? And we said, well, we wrote our goal in January of this year, um, the start of 2020, that we want to be fully paid out of debt January of 2024. Or was it 2025? 2024. It was 2024. And Ryan was like, no, that's, you guys are saying that, but I can already tell that you guys are going to hammer this thing. And we were like, oh, like, yeah, okay, sure. And that was when we had like $135,000 worth of debt. We're now down to 90,000 90, and like 400 bucks. Yeah. So you haven't even made it through a whole year yet. With me. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty it's sweet. Pretty it. sweet. Yeah, it's it's exciting. So yeah, you guys, this this giveaway we're gonna do once we get to five thousand downloads, um, which shout out to you guys, five thousand downloads is super cool. Uh, we'll be doing the session giveaway. So it'll be an Instagram post. All you got to do is share that bad boy, and you'll get the coaching sessions with Ryan. And thank you for everyone who's been listening. That means five thousand people have sat down and listened to us, whether that they, they are in the car driving or cleaning their house, or in the shower, wherever you are, just thank you. Um, I originally thought there was going to be three people, uh, so 5,000 is really cool, so thanks for all the support. Yeah, and it holds us accountable, and that was the main thing for us wanting to start this, was we didn't want to keep talking to just my brother about all the stuff we were trying to do. (laughs) We wanted to talk to other people and have them support us and hold us accountable, so it's cool. We feel like we got a little mini army of uh, avocado toast friends toasties. walking around toasties yeah. the toast- marching toasties the marching toasties exactly <laughs> well ryan thank you so much dude we we are so thankful just for you and your time and what you've given to us so again we're just so excited to share you with everybody now absolutely absolutely i'm glad to come on anytime you guys want me to perfect Pleasure. well we'll have to do we'll have to do another you know like hey we're doing a q a with ryan send us all your questions and We'll we'll see if we yeah. can wrap them up. That'd be awesome. I'd love, I'd love to sit down and just answer a bunch of random questions. It'd be fun. That'd be a blast. Yeah, I bet you get some wild ones too. Like cool. situation based. Yes, yeah, I'd be crazy down for ones. situation based stuff. Let's do it. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, All right, there it is. Future episode. We'll start racking up some uh, some questions. All right, cool. that'd be fun. Awesome. Well, thank you, man. We appreciate you. Have a good night. All right, you as well. Thanks, guys. Hello again, Toasties. If you made it this far into the episode, thank you so much. Now about that giveaway, this is legit. You need to follow our Instagram posts and follow the instructions when we post that because this is a huge opportunity for you to win free coaching sessions with Ryan, which for us, those two sessions alone were life-changing. So please Make sure you do not miss out on this amazing opportunity. Yeah, super dope giveaway from Ryan. So make sure you're stalking our Instagram to to stay locked in on that. And I also want to stress to you guys, we loved having Ryan on, and we definitely want to have him on, on again soon. And we were not playing. We will take your straight-up questions from DMs on Instagram and check Ryan with them and see what his – his plan of action might be. So if you're tossing up a question in your life and your finances and you're unsure of what somebody might say, let's get you some straight up advice from our personal financial coach. You've heard us crushing our goals. Ryan's been the person to support us behind us behind it all. Let him support you as well. If you've got a question like, hey, we're unsure if we should sell my husband's car and get into something else or if we should be paying this much for daycare or anything you're unsure about, Let's go ahead and throw it at Ryan, and Haley and I might reach out to you and ask you for a little bit more information on it, but we'd love to toss Ryan those questions and almost have like a live coaching session. So damn us on Instagram if you have anything that you are unsure about. That's going to do it on this episode of The Price of Avocado Toast. As always, you guys, we are so happy to have this conversation with you today, and we're so happy to be a part of this community that has supported us and helped hold us accountable on our path to financial freedom. As always, happy budgeting. You've got this, Toasties. Thank you for listening to The Price of Avocado Toast. 
If you have vibed with this episode, share it with a friend. We'd love to continue building our listening community. If you're interested in speaking more with a financial coach, hit up our coach Ryan at Me Financially Free on Instagram. Use the promo code HELP50 in the consultation notes section to receive 50% off.